enough playtime. Let's get to work. In today's video, I'm filing a grievance against Tops. Let's do this. What is up, YouTube? Victor here, the rookie card specialist on YouTube, and welcome. You know, not all that long ago, I gave my rookie card thesis during Hobby Palooza. I made mention on how the hobby has no representation. You see, you have the leagues and the players association on one hand, and in the other, you have the industry. But the hobby has no seat at the table. I proposed then a human resource department. Now, in my line of work, not having representation, well, that's, that's not going to work. You see, there are union organizations that have come into work agreements with the company. When there is an alleged violation of these agreements, the organization has a right to file a grievance, also known as a complaint. You see, there are processes and procedures established to respond to these complaints. The purpose of them is to keep good labor management relations. Typically, a copy of the grievance is given to the department manager and another to the head of human resources. Now, the HR then has a contractual responsibility to look into the matter to verify the grievance. They typically will have 30 days to respond back to the union organization by way of letter. For minor offenses, they can affirm the violation and assure the organization that it won't happen again. Or what is called a time claim can be awarded if the union organization asked for one in the grievance. Worst case scenario, the grievance gets denied and the matter then goes to arbitration in which a neutral third party hears the case. The decision of the arbitrator then stands. They have the final say and authority in the matter. Well, I want to file a grievance against Tops now for its alleged misuse of the rookie card identifier. I'll be using Aaron Judge inside 2017 Tops now as my pivot point. See, I believe there is a violation of long-time hobby standards. Around 2017, I really started to notice something shifted with rookie cards. Now, prior to 2017, I noticed the industry had different guidelines on what they consider rookie cards. If you looked at their websites or previous publications back then, many of the guidelines were similar, but there were some subtle differences. Today, with the exception of ComC, Baseball Cardpedia, and my website, alltimegreats.blog, try finding a website that's going to explain rookie card guidelines. Beckett, PSA, SGC, Tops, Panini, Upper Deck, you won't find any documentation explaining the rookie card. Their websites or publications have removed any indication of what a rookie card is. It's non-existent. It's like they don't even want to touch it. In 2017 to now, there is a flood of inserts, subsets, parallels, on-demand products, and manufacturers want you to believe that these are all legitimate rookie cards. However, they are a watered-down version of what a rookie card truly is. You see, quietly and very subtly, the hobby has been lulled to sleep on this matter. Card manufacturers found loopholes. Beckett Publications, once the leader in rookie card correctness, now has a very soft stance. I digress. We need to get back to the topic at hand. Now, let me say this about Tops. I'm one of their biggest fans. I appreciate their history, their card designs, and the nostalgia that they've created over the years. I'm in no way throwing mud at them, but what I am doing is filing a grievance on an observation that I've made. This is the ethical way of handling disputes in a union environment. Tops Now is amazing. I love the concept and purchased many of them when my Chicago Cubs started their run in 2016. I continued in 2017 to purchase the first few cards of Aaron Judge, but then I got really discouraged about it. Another rookie card? Did you know Aaron Judge has 51 different cards in this 2017 Tops Now set? 39 of them were given the MLB RC insignia. You can see some of them right here. Now, if you include the autos, the relics, and parallels, 
you can include another 345 cards. And now this would be a good time to quote Phil Simms, Deion Sanders, and Boomer Esiason on the CBS NFL show when they say, Come on, man. Tops. Come on, man. And for those who don't know, Tops now is a print-on-demand set. When memorable events happen throughout the season, new cards are offered to collectors through their website. This opt-in window is only available for 24 hours. Now, after that 24-hour window, the printers are fired up, and, the only, and only the number ordered in that 24-hour period is printed and distributed. By capturing these highlights as they happen, the set begins to mimic a historic documentary. In the 2017 set, however, 863 cards were offered to collectors, and when you factor in the $9.99 price tag, it would cost you $8,621.37 to build the set. It would be amazing to build this set and be able to read the highlights of how the season unfolded years later. Now, I've heard it said that it's not designed or meant to be a complete set format. I think they were saying that to defend the price tag, to which I would say, aha, uh -huh. and we'll come back to this point in just a minute. But my grievance isn't about price or set design. It's about branding so many Aaron Judge rookie cards with the MLB RC insignia when they are not true rookie cards. Times like these, I like to refer to the Ten Commandments of the rookie card for guidance. Commandment number six tells us that a rookie card must appear in the base set. If more than one is present, the first appearance of the player shall be considered the rookie card. Logically then, this makes card number 87 the rookie card. However, if we take the position that this is not a set, it disqualifies any of these from being true rookie cards. Commandment number seven. A rookie card must be allocated in pack form and distributed nationally. You see, this is not the case with Tops Now. It is an online print-on-demand concept. And commandment number 10. A rookie card must not be an insert, parallel, redemption, nor an on-demand product. This is why I'm a big advocate for having a set of guidelines in writing. This way, when a question arises, we have something to refer to. This way, the flavor of the day opinion can be overruled. Now, in my work environment, I understand why this type of thing happens. Over the years, there are new management changes. Sometimes, management changes happen frequently. New employees come and go too. And if left unchecked, the work agreements get watered down, and if neither side enforces them, they become obsolete altogether. What happens in a union environment when the work agreement becomes obsolete? That's a fantastic question, and I'm really glad you asked it. What happens is politics, bribery, favoritism, finger pointing. What happens then, corruption sets in. By its very definition, corruption means guilty of dishonest practices, a lack of integrity. Now enter the old timers, the guys with the whiskers and some seniority under their belt. And what they do is remind labor organizations and they remind management that there's work agreements that help us resolve these issues. What is the purpose of these work agreements? The number one reason is because it keeps all parties accountable. Work agreements also provide processes and procedures, and when followed, they provide boundaries, stability, quality of product, and profitability. So when we stray too far, as we oftentimes do, there is a process established to get us back to center. Tops, I realize you're the big dog in town, at least for now, you're the undisputed heavyweight champion of the baseball card industry. And I understand you were riding the good fortune of the Aaron Judge train. But you overdid it. A player can't and shouldn't have 51 cards in a single brand, let alone an on-demand brand. And for the sake of the hobby, I hope that in the future, we can bring and have some clarity on these types of things. 
Well, friends, that's going to be it for this one. Please help me by clicking on that like button. And if the topic of the rookie card interests you, please consider subscribing. Here, it's all about the rookie card. We look at its past and present day status, all in an effort to better understand this hobby icon. Now, you can check out my rookie card thesis on Hobby Palooza here, or something you should know about Acuna and Tatis Jr. rookie cards on this side. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.